In this episode, let's have a look at how to do multicam in Premiere Pro CC. Now, first as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert on multicam necessarily. I have done a couple of shoots now where I've done multicam here in Premiere, worked out a couple of things. Great to have your guys' feedback if you know more efficient ways to do things, but let me just run through a really simple scenario, show you what I'm doing here, and hopefully you can learn something from this, or you can provide some insight to our little community here on how to do this better. We have two cameras, a close-up, sort of a close-up and a wide shot, and then of course we have our production audio track. So what we want to do is get these three to line up. Now, the first thing you have to do when you're shooting multicam is after you have all of your cameras rolling, you need some sort of sync point. And typically what you'll do is some sort of clap like that. Uh, typically, obviously on, on movie sets, they'll use a clapper board, same idea. And typically what I'll do is three claps like this. And the idea with that is it gives Premiere something to use to actually sync all of the three different clips, the one audio and the two camera clips. The assumption here is that your two cameras are capturing reference audio, or sort of a, you know, the rough cut audio um, that it's just going to use for reference. And then you'll have your production audio, which is what we have here. The problem is, though, in my particular case, one of my clips didn't have any audio in it whatsoever. And that's this one here. Um, there's a there's an explanation for that. I don't think we'll go into it here, but I'll show you both the easy way and the hard way. If I had recorded audio on both cameras plus the production audio, all I have to do is select all three clips, right click and choose create multi-camera source sequence. Once that comes up for the synchronized point, all I have to do is click audio, which tells Premiere, hey, there's something in there. You should be able to figure out how to synchronize these based on the audio. And it has a pretty pretty good algorithm for going and figuring that out, especially if you've got those three claps up at the front. You can do it with one clap, and typically with a clapper board, that's what's happening. I find that the three claps is a pretty surefire way to make sure that Premiere can figure it out and get those synced up, and I've never had it fail on me if I do that. So all I do is click on, or select audio and click OK, and that will create our multicam sequence for us. Now, again, in this case, I have one clip that had no audio, so we have to do it the hard way. And it's actually not that hard. Let me show you what I mean here. The idea here is that since I don't have audio on this one video clip, Premiere's not going to have any way of knowing how to line it up with the audio clip and the other camera clip. So all I need to do is set down a marker at the point where I actually do my clip, so or my clap. So if I run through this frame by frame, and you can scrub through your video frame by frame if you weren't already aware of this, using the right and left arrow keys on your keyboard. Right goes forward a frame, left goes backward a frame. So I know that I want to actually sync right there, right when the first clap connects. Here's my first clap, second, third. Okay, I want to get it synced up right here at my first clap, right as I first make contact. So all I need to do is right click and choose add marker. Okay, let's do the same thing for the second clip. Interestingly here, this clip is actually a little out of sync. This was the audio recorded on this camera, and we actually heard the clap before the hands actually came together. But we're smarter than that. We know this is the frame that we want to use as our sync point. So I just right click and choose add marker. Then we do a similar type thing for the audio clip. Now with the audio clip, we have our audible clap here. So we'll just go and find that first clap. Okay, there it was. I need to go back a few frames to get back to it. And then forward one frame or two frames until I hear it again. There it is right there. I just right click and choose add marker. Okay, once we've got that taken care of, we highlight each of the three clips, right click and again choose create multi-camera source sequence, just like that. This time, instead of choosing the audio item for synchronize point, I'm going to choose the clip marker because, again, we've set those markers to tell Premiere where to line these up, where to sync these up. So once we've done that, I actually just generally leave these next three settings as they are. For the sequence preset, I leave that at automatic. Se uh, Premiere is actually pretty good about figuring out the type of footage that you have and therefore sets the sequence to that. If it doesn't, you can always come in here and specifically choose the type of footage that you have in your sequence. 
I also in the audio section leave the sequence settings at all cameras and then I figure out which of the audio tracks I want to keep. You'll see, we'll show you how to do that in just a second. And then as far as camera names, you can just leave it at enumerate cameras or use track names or use clip names, whatever you're more comfortable with. Enumerate cameras just gives them names like I think camera one, camera two, so on and so forth. So we'll click OK and that creates our new sequence over here, our multicam sequence. We can just grab and drag that down to the create new icon down here. That's for creating new sequences. We drop it on there and it creates this sequence for us. All right, first thing we need to do before anything else is figure out which of these audio tracks we wanna keep. So let's zoom in a little bit. I just come in here, roll these down so I can see the waveforms, see what I'm working on. And I've got five different tracks and I know I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of four of those because I only wanna keep the one uh, production audio track. So the first thing let's do is actually come back here and just make sure we actually synced up okay. Looks good, okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of, whoops. Let's get rid of the tracks that we don't need. So I can, click on the track here, right click and choose unlink. Now these bottom two tracks have no audio on them whatsoever. You can see visually there's no waveform, so we know we can get rid of those two. So I'll just highlight those and delete. Now these three remaining, I gotta figure out which of these I wanna keep. And the way I can do that is actually listen to each of them individually. And the way to do that is to click on the solo button right here, the S button, solo track. So I can listen to the first one, in this episode, let's have a look at the differences between a car. I think that actually might be a track we want. Let's listen to these others just to make sure. Cardioid pickup mic and a hypercardioid. That's definitely one of the camera mics we do not want. Pickup mic when doing indoor dialogue. And that looks like the other channel on that same camera. So we can get rid of these bottom two tracks because those are the camera audio tracks. They don't sound great. We don't want them. Highlight them and choose delete. Now, we take these two remaining, the video track and the audio track, and we want to link those back up so that when we move them around, they move around in sync. Okay, so now let's come back out here. Now I know I don't want to keep all this material up at the header of the track, so I can just go ahead and pull that out. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can sort of fine tune exactly when this starts. I want to start about right there. In this episode, let's... And there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and get into multicam here. So the way to pull up our interface for doing the multicam edit, where we actually get to cut back and forth between the different cameras, just come to this icon in the upper right-hand corner in our monitor and choose multi-camera. Now you can see right here is the camera that's currently being shown. And that's also highlighted in this case in yellow. And this is our switch interface. We can actually, just like on the TV shows where someone's doing live TV, maybe a sports cast, you have someone in a control room that's saying, okay, let's go to camera two, let's go to camera one, let's go back, you know, back and forth. And that's, that's your switch interface right here. So right now we're showing camera one, we could also switch over to camera two, our close shot, or back to our wide shot. So the idea is that as you play through this sequence right here, you can use this switch interface here to decide which of the cameras to show at any given time. And it will actually make the cuts for you down here in your sequence. Let me just run through the first five or 10 seconds here, show you what I mean. I'm gonna start on the, the close-up shot, cut to the wide shot, and then cut back into the close shot. So we'll go ahead and play first and do our switch. In this episode, let's have a look at the differences between a cardioid pickup mic and a hypercardioid pickup mic when doing indoor dialogue. Check this out. Okay, so you can see how we switched back and forth, and you can see that Premiere actually made those cuts for us. You see it made a cut here as we went from our close mic shot and a hyper to our wide shot. So now you may not get those just right the first time, and that's okay, and there's actually a way to finesse that, and all you have to do is grab this rolling edit tool, which has the two arrows pointing left and the two arrows pointing right, and you can actually then come down here into your interface and actually drag those cuts to wherever you want it. So for example, this cut here, I may actually wanna line it up so it makes the switch right as I start my next sort of phrase of dialogue. So let's see what that looks like now. Pickup mic and a hypercardioid pickup mic. Okay, I like the pacing on that, that's pretty good. And we'll also do the same here, kind of move that one closer to where this phrase starts, right about there. Pickup mic when doing indoor dialogue. Okay, so that's pretty much 
kind of the basics of how to do multicam in Premiere. Obviously, you'd go through your whole track here and um, go ahead and do your switching and then come back and fine tune using the rolling edit tool. So those are again, the basics of Multicam and Premiere. I hope you found that helpful. If you see things here that we could have done to improve and make that process a little more efficient, definitely leave a comment down below. We'd love to learn how to improve this process and make it a little bit quicker and easier to get our final edit. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound.